time will take about two minutes to get there. Okay. So we will do the we will try with the my maneuvers that we are seeing with uh, with breathing. We'll do a jaw a jaw uh jaw thrust. Okay. Yes. We try a jaw thrust. When you do the jaw thrust, you notice that there's some secretions in the mouth. We we ask ask assist me with a suction tube. Suction tube given. Mm -hmm. So we suction the patient. Okay. Yes. Uh, we reassess for oxygenation. Oxygenation is still at eighty percent. Oxygenation still at eighty uh, percent. At this moment, uh, do we have our PTT? PTT. PTT equipment has been brought. What do you need? I need us to pre medicate the patient uh, with. Uh, Muscle relaxant, mineral is still on, uh, on supplemental oxygen. Muscle relaxant has been given. Yes, so assist me with the, with the size uh, seven, seven zero. Okay. Oh no, which look at the small finger to size the. the, the so you have built three tubes, you have brought a 6.5, a 7, 7.5, and an 8 tube. Which one do you want? Uh, give me all of them to my size. Okay, so we give them to you. We give them to you one. So we get the patient to a size 7. Okay, so size seven. Uh, we we give me an, an, an laryngoscope. Laryngoscope given to you. Mm -hmm. and so we sweep the. We open the the mouth. We we sweep the the tongue to the left, mm -hmm. and then we visualize the 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 epiglottis. Then we lift we lift the laryngoscope a bit higher. We visualize the vocal cords. Uh, my assistant hands over the ET tube in the correct position. Okay. It is given to you in the correct position. Uh, we insert it in, through the vocal cords. Mm -hmm. And once it's inside, uh, we cuff. We 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 put air into the we inflate it. Inflate it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we check for pattern uh, for for position. Okay. So we look for the the la the lungs and the chest if there's a chest rise. We also auscultate the epigastrium to see if there's any air going into the into the or meanwhile we connect oxygen to here. Okay. And then um, yes, we auscultate the gas epigastrium. Uh, we look for foam genus along the tube. So you confirm the tube is in place? Yes, so and, and then we, we we connect the ventilator. Okay. And then we look we look for we look at the capnography. Okay. Uh, after that we secure the ET tube in place. Okay. And then um, yes we we reassess for oxygenation. Oxygenation has improved to about eighty six percent from eighty. At this point, we already have a definitive airway. Yes, Our cis cis spine collar is in place. Mm -hmm. So we move on to B. Okay. So we expose our patient. Expose the patient. We look at the abdomen if it's rising. We look at the okay. Uh, we, we look at the patient's chest. So the the the, the patient has bruises across the chest. Okay. Uh, the we look for um, lung. Lung ex chest expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, chest is expanding bilaterally. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we look for symmetry. Symmetrical expansion. Yes. Then we look for use of accessory muscles. Non used. Mm -hmm. And then we open up the C spine collar. We assess uh, for the uh, distin venous distension. There's no venous distension. And then we also assess for tracheal deviation. The trachea is central. At this point, we percuss the the yeah, it's the no multi no multi knot bilateral. Fantastic. Then we oscillate the chest. So we have bilateral air entry and both of sides and the equal. We also do the heart rate. Which is also for, uh, well, it is tachycardic. Yes, tachycardic. So uh, at this point, um, I'm not seeing any potentially life threatening injuries from B, uh, but I'm saturating at 86 percent. So what are my findings? It was normal chest expansion. Normal chest expansion. So uh, at this point, uh, I think we are we're doing well in terms of B. Yes, we're doing yes B. I I I'll leave. Okay, we are reassess we reassess the airway. Okay, and then we go back to breathing. The airway into the tube is still in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the saturations at this point? Saturations are still at 86, 86, 86 to 90. 86 to 90 mm -hmm. uh, so I move on to C, saturation and hemorrhage control. Uh, in C, um, 
we we were hypotensive. What are the decrees at this point? Because I'm now moving, not crashing, you're now at 70 over 60. Okay, now we have to rush to fix uh, IV. But uh, two large bowls. So you had one in place? We already had one in place. So we insert the other one and look for tubes for samples for the XM and the VG. Tubes are given to you, samples taken. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are rushed to the lab. Okay. And then we add another 500 ml of crystal oil solution. Fluid is available. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, at this point, how much of fluid do we, how much, what is the DP? The blood pressure is still at 70 over 60. 70 over 60. We quickly examine the patient okay. from the head to the toe to see where there are any points of hemorrhage. So what are you looking at exactly? Uh, so there's so, so you can see some you have noted some yes, bleeding around the, around the nose, around the ear, and around the chest. The chest. Now the yeah, area. a quick abdominal exam. So there is the patient's grimaces and tenderness when you examine the abdomen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So at this point I'm suspecting a, a blunt abdominal injury. I don't know if there's any penetration. So I, I request for fast, which no one on the system is assisting to do. So they do the fast, the radiograph is available. He quickly comes and does a fast. Mm-hmm. Then he notices that it's bad in the right upper quadrant of the tumor. Yes, at this point we look for blood from the other side because so the, the blood is still being prepared. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, we examine for other areas that we can stop bleeding because for the abdomen we really can't turn okay. So uh, we we assess for pelvic. So the pelvic maneuver, the pelvic is stable. Fantastic. Then we look at the at the right lower limb. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you find anything that depends on more? Then we look at we open the the spleen that had been put. Okay. And then we as we examine this at the left lower limb. The patient is in pain, mm-hmm. so we give uh, narcotics. Okay, so you give the patient narcotics and he relaxes. Okay. Anything that you found on the examination of the left limb? Uh, he had a swollen, a swollen left lower limb. He, uh, left thigh. Okay. So at this point we expose this. All right, you expose it. And then, um, so mm-hmm. when we, when we touch, then we palpate the muscle. Okay. Yes. There is a deformity there. There is a deformity. And then it's also swollen. So I'm assuming it's a large hematoma. I'm assuming it's a large hematoma. Oh, no, it's a large hematoma. Okay, fine. So, uh, are there any open wounds? There are no open wounds. There are no open wounds. So, uh, mm. uh, the leg was already splinted. So we leave it in the splints. The open wounds. Um, Blood pressure is going down. At this point, we request for tonic. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we request for. There are no open wounds. There are no open wounds. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, we request for tonic, and then we put it above the. Blood pressure is crashing. Yes, we put it. Is the blood coming? Yes, blood is now come. Okay, we transfuse the blood. Okay. Massive trans. We start the massive protocol, and then at this point we put a tonic. Why are you putting a tonic? Because uh, of the expanding of the tone of this. Okay. Lower what limb. else could cause the lower limb to be swollen and painful? Compartment syndrome. What else could cause the lower limb to be swollen and painful? The fracture. Okay. So yes. what do we do to the fracture? We splint this fracture. Right now you said the time is up. So at this so point, at this point, we have to wait to see because it's already done. Tell me about it. Oh, the servant has been fine. It has been splinted, but yes, but still, when you have a patient who has come and you don't, you're not sure what was done, right? The splint could not be, it has not been placed properly, so the patient was still not moving from you. Yes, true. Okay. Sorry, time is up.